In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make a budget bug out bag. Now the way I'm going to do it is pretty simple because I'm already making one for my sister as a birthday gift. I'm trying to get her involved in prepping just a little bit. So I'm making her a bare minimum budget bug out bag that she can add to over time. I'm going to show you everything I'm putting in it. And I'm also going to be showing you options in case you want to spend just a little bit more, but stay within what I consider a budget bug out bag framework. Now I used eight categories to do this. I've been using eight categories for years. The contents change, but the categories remain the same. The categories, the defense, shelter, hydration, food, first aid, communications, miscellaneous, and barter items. Now I'm also going to be talking about some skills you might be interested in learning. And finally, I'm going to tell you what everything costs at the time of this video. Now by the time you look, it's probably going to be costing more, so don't be surprised. I, I did a video review on a tent that was $28. A year and a half later, it was $50, so you know, just be aware of that. I'm just telling you to give you a rough idea, but also so you see the difference between the prices of some of the options within each category. Now the first category is defense. Without a good defense, you could lose everything you have, including your life. So I'm just including two items that might help you escape somebody who might be trying to attack you. Be sure to check uh, with your local authorities and state authorities on the purchasing and the possession and use of these items. The first item is a stun gun with a flashlight. This cost me $10. If you use it correctly, it could be a very effective way of helping you escape from somebody who's attacking you. With a flashlight, you can just carry it at night and people just think you have a flashlight. But really, you're prepared with a stun gun. The second item is pepper spray. This could also be a very effective way to help you escape from somebody who's attacking you. It's a good idea to buy pepper spray and practice spray together. You can buy these together for about $10. The practice spray is just water. You can practice, for example, on a tree, a wall, a fence, aiming where the face of an imaginary attacker would be. You'll find out which finger you will use, how to unlock it, how far it'll spray, that kind of thing. Two pepper sprays like this one cost $15. Remember, only use it outdoors. Lastly, you might want to consider learning how to defend yourself, maybe even with martial arts. For this category, I'm including one pepper spray and a practice spray. It cost me $10. I think this is the bare minimum that should be included in her budget bug out bag. The second category is shelter. To me, shelter means staying warm and dry and as bug free as possible. The first shelter item, and least expensive, is an emergency Mylar blanket. The Mylar blanket costs less than $5 at Walmart or online. You can wrap it around you while you're walking, sitting, or sleeping. The manufacturer says it'll retain 90% of your body heat and keep you dry. The second item is a Mezone or Mizone or Mizone emergency sleeping bag. It costs me around $10, and it's made from the same material as the emergency blanket, but it's shaped like a sleeping bag. It's thin, so you have to be very careful with it. There are better ones out there like this one, but they cost a lot more. The third shelter item is a tent. Now I have three options for a tent. The first one is a green 8x10 tarp, and it costs $12. I can set it up in two different ways. The first way is easy and simple. Just be sure to put a tennis ball or wadded up cloth or rubber cap on top of the trekking pole or stick or whatever you use to keep it from poking through the tarp. Now this configuration ends up being a lot smaller and you need some cordage. For tent stakes, just carve out some small tree branches. I use small pebbles as tie down buttons where there were no grommets. The nice part is it has ground cover. Another tent option is a don't die in the woods two person survival tent. This cost me about $20. It's basically a tube tent made of mylar. This one is camouflage. There are openings on each end and it comes with cordage to hold it up. There are no grommets, and you need four rocks or some kind of weight to hold down the corners. The final tent option is a Wakeman fully enclosed tent. This one costs $23. It has a rain fly and an inner screen with a zipper for ventilation and an interior storage pocket. It only weighs about three pounds, which really isn't that bad for a two-person tent. But you have to be able to put it inside a backpack or attach it to the outside. More on backpacks later. The fourth shelter item is a poncho. I think having a good poncho is extremely important. This is an emergency poncho. You can get something like this at Walmart or online for under $5. It's very thin though and easily tears, but if taken care of, it might last a little while. I would prefer using two 33 gallon garbage bags. 
They're thicker and would last a lot longer. We made this one with a hood, but it's short. This one doesn't have a hood and it's longer. Both can be used separately, but if worn together, they provide the best coverage. You can also use the poncho to collect rainwater for drinking water. See under the description for instructions my wife made on how to make these. The best option, in my opinion, is the sapphire rose or sapphire rose, I don't know how to pronounce that, sapphire rose poncho. It has a brim on the hood and a drawstring for the hood. It costs about $16 and is worth every penny, in my opinion, but a little pricey for a budget bug out bag. For this category for my sister's bug out bag, I'm including the tarp, the emergency blanket, and the homemade emergency poncho, adding up to $17. The third category is hydration. In general, a person can't live longer than three days without water. You might want to add four or more bottles of water to your budget bug out bag. Water is heavy, but it won't last long anyway, and you can use the empty bottles later. Now when you're done, just crunch up the bottle and put the cap on so it keeps it crunched to save room in your pack. Having the ability to purify water is very important. This cup cost me $7. You can boil the water, let it cool, and pour it into a container over and over until the container's full. This container cost me $6. Or just let it cool and drink it right out of the cup. You can add Kool-Aid to help get rid of the swamp taste until you run out of it. It would also be a good idea to filter out sediment or things like small wood slivers before boiling it. Use one of your water bottles dedicated to dirty water only and dip it in the lake or pond or river and fill it up. Place your bandana over the cup and then slowly pour the water over the bandana so it filters out the sediment from getting in the cup. You can use a bandana, cotton cloth, or t-shirt. A set of three bandanas cost me about $6. And don't forget, you can cook in the cup as well. The next item is a life straw. The manufacturer says it can filter up to 1,000 gallons, and they cost about $10 on Amazon right now. The better option for filtering water, in my opinion, is the Sawyer water filter. I bought this one for about $21. It comes with 16-ounce squeeze pouch, 7-inch straw, and a cleaning plunger. The manufacturer says it'll filter up to 100,000 gallons. I'm also including 15 Ziploc bags. After your fire is out and cooled, put some of the charcoal in one of the bags. When you run across some small pebbles, put some in a second bag. When you run across some sand, put that in a third bag. You should also store some cotton balls in a fourth Ziploc bag. Now you can use all of these items to make a water filter to help remove most of the muck out of excessively dirty water. We cut two plastic bottles and put a hole in one of the caps. Then we layered one bottle with cotton, sand, charcoal, and pebbles. The water we used for this demonstration was so dirty it had small worms swimming in it before filtering it. It took a while for the excessively dirty water to work its way down, but after a while it flowed pretty well. No matter how clean that water may appear, you must boil it before drinking it. See the video description for more information on how to make this. For this hydration category, I'm including the cup, the life straw, and three bandanas. This totals $23. To me, this is the minimum you need for a budget bug out bag. Now the fourth category is food. Some scientists say you can't live longer than three weeks without food. Heck, with three or four days without food, you're going to get pretty weak. It's a good idea to have several energy bars. If you're on a budget, you don't need to buy them all at once. Just buy one every time to go to the store. One clip bar costs me $2. Look at the bars that are high in calories. In addition to this, I even have chocolate candy, such as M&M's, Hershey bars, and Nestle bars. Because they taste good, they put me in a good mood and give me some energy. Good is good, <laughs> melted or not. Now eventually you're gonna run out of food and you're gonna have to hunt for your food, such as rabbits, rats, snakes, squirrels, fish, and forage for berries, fruit, uh, nuts, you know, food like that. And there are several items I'm going to talk about here that can help you hunt for your food. One item is a rat trap. I would not use this or several of the following items unless it was an absolute SHTF catastrophic event. You just drill a hole through one corner and tie cordage through the hole, which gets tied to a tree next to a game trail. Put some camouflage around it and set the trap. I found one for under $2 on Amazon. Another item is a glue trap. I have 10 of these in my bug out bag. It costs about $22 for 36 of them. Now I would not use these unless I was dying of hunger, willing to even eat insects. People use these to catch pests like rats. This one's non-toxic. 
I installed a grommet on one corner so I could tie cordage through it, just like I did with the rat trap. If something gets on this, it is not getting away. The advantage of using this over the rat trap is it can catch insects, such as spiders and crickets. But it can still catch larger animals like rats, rabbits, and squirrels. Even though it's non-toxic, I would not eat anything that touches the glue. I tested this in my garage and I found that the body of some, not all, insects I caught, like crickets or spiders, didn't even touch the glue, just their legs. When done, I can just reattach the protective film. The next item is wire to make snares. Now making a snare is really easy to learn. It'd be nice to have several of these working 24 seven to catch food for you. I think it cost me about $8 at the time I bought it. Fishing supplies such as string, hooks, floats, corks, weights, and bait are really a good idea. Both the fishing line here and the hooks cost me $10. For fire making to cook up your food and boil water, just include Bic lighters and a fire starter in your budget bug out bag. This one lighter costs less than $2 and the fire starter about $10. You can also rub Vaseline all over some cotton or cotton balls and use these to help start your fire. Just be sure to label the Ziploc bag cotton balls for fire making. Also use one of your Ziploc bags to collect wood chips when you're cutting wood. You can use these to help start a fire as well. Consider learning how to make a figure four deadfall trap to catch an animal like a rat. All you do is locate three of the straightest sticks you can find and carve slots in the appropriate places and arrange them in a way where you can lean a large rock on them so that when an animal like a rat touches the bait trigger, the rock will fall crushing the rat. If you want, you can buy some dowels and carve them or use a power tool. They're clean, straight, and easier to carve or cut. Most videos show making these you know, out of sticks when you're already in the woods, but you can make these ahead of time and put them in your bug out bag. See below under the video description to download a diagram my wife made that shows you how to make a figure four deadfall trap. I'm including a cliff bar, snare wire, a rat trap, and fishing line and hooks, a big lighter, and fire starter and three dowels pre-cut for a deadfall trap. You can also print out the diagram my wife made under the video description and put it in your own budget bug out bag just in case your pre-made sticks break. Total cost for this category is about $34. The fifth category is a first aid kit and I suggest you just make one of your own. For this budget bug out bag I'm including a few band-aids, neosporin, and a medicine bottle with extra tweezers and needles I had on hand. This is obviously incomplete, so my sister will have to add things based on what she feels she needs. The sixth category is communications. It's a very important category because you need information in order to make decisions about what you need to do, and also to be able to communicate with other people. Now I'm including a few things in here that I think are, are valuable for any bug out bag. The first item is a whistle. You should always keep this with you so you can call for help should you need to. This one costs $2. The second item is a Running Snail AM FM weather band radio. It cost me $17. Now I can charge it with a hand crank, solar, or USB. I tested these features along with two other radios in the link above. With this radio, I can gather information if the stations are broadcasting. Also, it has a flashlight that lasts a long time, and I can charge my cell phone with it using the USB-C charging cable. Now I tested this and it works really well. So basically, you don't have to buy a flashlight and you don't need a battery pack and solar panel to charge your cell phone. It's perfect for a budget bug out bag. Speaking of a cell phone, you may want to download survival apps for your cell phone that work offline. Just create a survival folder to store the apps that show you how to make knots, how to identify edible plants, medicinal plants, or how to start a fire, or how to make shelter or read about first aid. The third item is a two-way radio. Now because of the price, you may want to hold off on this until you have most of the important things done in your bug out bag. I chose two radio options. The first one is awesome. I love this thing. It's a Quan Chang UV K6 5 watt UHF, VHF, DTMF, FM dual band, air band radio with NOAA weather alert function. You can also add custom firmware that has some really awesome features. And I can charge this radio with my AM FM running snail radio because it has a USB-C charging port. This cost me 34 bucks. Although you can listen without a license, you will need to pass a test to get a license in order to transmit. Some people ask, do you need a license in an emergency? Well, the answer is yes and no. It just all depends on the situation. See the link above for more information. But you really need one anyway to set it up correctly and test it. 
Just because you can hear people talking doesn't mean you can successfully transmit. In fact, I'm willing to bet you will not be able to transmit to some repeaters at first. It may take some tweaking and transmitting to test. If you already have a Baofeng UV5R like this one, you may want to buy this battery. It has a USB-C charging port. I personally like to stay away from the USB cables with a barrel tight end because I can use the same USB-C cable for everything. The second option is a Baofeng GMRS Radio GM15. This one costs $34 as well. You do not need a license to listen, but a license is required to transmit, which costs about $35. You don't have to take a test for it, and one license can be used by the licensee and any immediate family members, and the license valid for 10 years. This radio is GMRS repeater ready. GMRS repeaters allow you to connect to and talk to people at greater distances. It also has NOAA channels which broadcast weather information. This radio is ideal because you can charge it with the AM FM running snail radio by using the USB-C charging cable. I'm including the whistle and the running snail radio in my sister's budget bug out bag. She'll have to decide whether she wants a handheld ham radio or a GMRS radio. The total cost for this category at this point is $19. The seventh category is miscellaneous. It's kind of a catch-all category and it changes frequently. You may want to add insect repellent. I found this one for $7. I found some 550 paracord for $6. Now with the seven yarns inside, you could make fishing line, a net, a shelter, snares, and more. It can technically make eight feet of line per foot of 550 paracord using the sheath and the seven yarns. Also, I found some duct tape in our garage and I cut 15 feet off and wrapped it around a card. And I found a, a few zip ties as well. If you're a AAA member, you might want to go to the local office and pick up a few free maps and include them in your budget bug out bag. The most important item is a knife. You can make traps, field dress animals for food, hunt, chop wood, make fire starting tools like a bow drill, on and on and on. I budgeted $10 for a knife. I bought this at Walmart and it is definitely not the best knife in the world, but it'll have to do for now. You can upgrade it later. Don't forget a knife sharpener. I've seen high quality knives for $10 on eBay, garage sales, thrift stores, flea markets. And I'll post the qualities to look for in a good knife under the description. For my sister's budget bug out bag, I'm including bug spray, paracord, a knife, and extra duct tape and zip ties that I already had in my garage. The total cost is $23. Now the eighth category is barter items, and I'm not including barter items in this budget bug out bag. But if you want to, you can check out my video uh, in the link above. It shows my bug out bag and it has barter items and, and uh, if you want to add other items to the other categories, you can check that out as well. Regarding backpacks, until you get one, just use something like a reusable grocery bag. All the contents for my sister's bug out bag fit fine in this one. Or try several garbage bags, one inside the other for strength. So you can keep your things in one place should you have to bug out before the bag's done. No one's going to bother you if they think you're carrying around garbage. When you can afford it, I would budget $10 for a pack, at least for now. You can often find a used pack in a garage sale, flea markets, eBay, thrift stores. Many of the packs you see right here were bought used, some of them for about $10. If you have a child who uses a pack and they get a new one, just use theirs for now. You won't look too threatening with a Barbie doll backpack. This is my wife's get home bag, which is a children's backpack. She keeps this in her car. Now I found this pack on Amazon for $8.99. This is the pack I'm using for my sister's bug out bag. It's not the best quality pack, but it'll do. In fact, everything I said I'm including in her pack is in this pack right now. The whole thing only weighs five and a half pounds, including the pack. It actually has room for more items. If you plan to buy the Wakeman tent or any larger tent, just be sure your pack is big enough to put it inside, or you may want a pack with a frame so you can mount it on the outside a little easier. Well, there you have it the contents of my sister's budget bug out bag, all wrapped up in a five and a half pound package, costing about $135. Now if $135 is a little bit more than you feel comfortable spending right now, then just don't include some of the items I talked about in this video, at least right now, just include them later. For example, snare wire, you can use your fishing line for that, or even the uh, yarn from the uh, 550 paracord. Hold off on pepper spray or insect repellent, or bandanas, you can use a t-shirt. Hold off on a fire starter, you can use a Bic lighter or make a bow drill. You don't even need a backpack at this point like I talked about in the video. 
In fact, you'd be into everything else for less than $90 as of the making of this video. If you have a way to charge your cell phone or don't care, and you have a small flashlight, then you can hold off on the radio for now. You'd be into everything for less than $70. If you want to spend a little bit more, uh, look for uh, my video on my bug out bag. I show the contents of that and you can go from there. I have all the same categories. Now, if you have everything I talked about in this video, it's still a work in progress. You really should be adding to it over time. I typed up a couple checklists for you and my wife uh, made a couple diagrams for you. You just have to go under the video description, download them and print them up. This is a skills checklist. These are all the skills I talked about in the video. Just cross out the ones you're not interested in and you can add some more right here if you want to. This is the contents checklist based on eight categories. All I did is type up the eight categories and then left everything else blank so you can fill in uh, whatever you want for your budget bug out bag. It, it helps you organize it and it's kind of like a wish list. My wife made a diagram that shows you how to make a, uh, a poncho out of a garbage bag. And she also made a diagram that shows you how to make a figure four deadfall trap. Here. I wanted to thank you for taking the time to watch my video. I really appreciate that. If you enjoyed the video and thought it was helpful, please share it and, uh, and like it and don't forget to subscribe. Uh, thanks again for watching and have a great day.